Slav, and thank you for, uh, for joining us. Uh, first of all, with European Championship just uh, around the corner, what kind of football can we expect after, after another hard season? Well, I think we can expect a good Euro. Good, good Euro, you know. Uh, it's, of course, it's a, it's a massive tournament, you know. It's, it's very important for, 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 for every country. I mean, uh, the national teams, the, you, are, you are representing your country and, and there's, no bigger, there's no bigger honor for, for a player. And, uh, and it's going to be in a great country, you know. It's in Germany, so uh, I expect, to be fair, I'm, I'm, I'm really looking forward for it. Talking about favorites. I'm talking about favorites, you know, on the paper, they're always the same. The big ones, you know, that are talking about, for me, of course, like for the majority of the fans uh, or for the majority of the football people, there's always, always uh, France, England. Is it about time? They're hoping, like they're always saying, it's about time, it's about time. So France, England, uh, I don't know, you know. Germany doesn't look good. Uh, they 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 changed the manager, you know, like like recently. But then again, they done the same before World Cup 2006, if you remember, and and they had a great World Cup. So they are also capable because they are they are hosts. Then uh, I don't know. I mean, you mentioned you mentioned England, and you said. Is it time? Is it time? Always when we are talking about favorites, always England is up there, but something is always missing. What do you think is missing with, with the, that national team that has always a great players, but always one step too short? Uh, look, it's not, you know, it's, 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 I mean, the European Championship or, or, the, or, or the Champions League, they are like more like a cup competitions, you know. It's not a league. In league, there are no surprises, you know. Man City or now Arsenal or, or, or uh, Real Madrid or Barcelona or Bayern Munich. Or, you, have enough, you have enough games to make it up if you have a crisis or whatever, if you lose few games. While in a, while in a big tournaments like in a cup competitions, you... You have to add an element of luck, you know. And I agree that there is a saying that you have to deserve luck and everything. But then you can be you can be unlucky, and without luck, you can't you can't win you can't win such a big tournament. So on paper, if we are talking about England, they are they are really good. They have a good generation. Uh, they are not they are not they are not in a negative phase, you know. Since the World Cup in World Cup in uh, Russia when they went to the semi-finals and they lost against Croatia. Then with Euro, they, they lost uh, the final on penalties. And even in Qatar when they lost, I think, against France in the quarterfinals or whatever. They are, they are like, they didn't win it, you know, but they, 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 are, they, they are very positive, you know. They didn't change the manager. It is Southgate for for uh, in a national team. It's long period, you know. It's I don't know eight years or whatever. Uh, so they are they are they think they need a little bit of luck. They have the players. They have the new players. They have uh, the players who already been there. You know, they have experience. Plus, they have like a new wave of players with with Bellingham. You know, and I mean, I I read article. There was an article few few days ago that uh, I think uh, they have few players who are leading goal scorers in different leagues. You know, they have Harry Kane, of course, he's, he's a leading goal scorer in, in Germany. Then at that time, it was Bellingham in, in Spain. And then I think, uh, apart from Holland, they had also a few, few in Premier League with Foden, with Palmer at Chelsea, the new guy, and with Saka from Arsenal and Oli Watkins. So they have they have six or seven goal scorers, you know, who are in, in, in great form this season. So that gives them big hope, also big expectation. Then they have always big pressure, massive pressure, you know, from the media that can that 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 is definitely the advantage and that is a 
wind in your back if if the things are going well. But uh, you can also break with 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 that kind of pressure. I would like to keep the focus a little bit uh, uh, on England. Yes, they were in the finals last European Championship, but I think maybe it stings, it hurts a little bit more that 96, that European Championship on, on their home court, that loss uh, on shootout in the semi-finals against Germany. You were there. What do you remember about that England team? Do you agree that this maybe hurts a bit more? I don't know. I think that was, at that time, they weren't the best from my point of view, but they were hoping because it was home after World Cup 66, you know, and then 30 years after it's coming home and all that thing. They are very capable of creating a, such a great buzz about it. But at that time, uh, I have to go back, you know, with my with my memory. They, they, they didn't have such... Uh, too many exciting players like they have now. You know, at that time, if I remember, there was uh, Gascoigne who sure. played abroad. There, there, there was, of course, Shearer, Sheringham. But now they have, they have a, I think now, now they have a better team than, than, uh, than in 96. So you think but with names, this 2024 is better than the 96 regarding names? Well, it's different time, you know. Maybe you can, you you can. It's very difficult to compare teams in 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 totally different era. You know that was like ages ago, ninety six. We can compare their team with their team in Qatar or with their team twenty twenty or their team in Russia. You know, but not you can't go back that long. You know, but. Uh, now they have they have they have the players who who are basically leading players in not only in the Premier League, you know. 96, the majority of their players they played in the Premier League, I think apart from Gascogne, almost every and at that time 96, we are told, at that time, that time Premier League was not B League in Europe, and it was still Serie A. Mm -hmm. It was still Italian league that was the, 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 the best players in the world played. Now it's different time. Now now Premier League is D League, and then and then they have a couple of players who are playing in uh, Real Madrid and Bayern Munich, and that adds quality, you know. So mm -hmm. uh, and I think they they have a good atmosphere, you know. They have a good atmosphere when when they were. I played ninety six in England. Mm, and I was at that time in England, and uh, also I, I know through talking to, with 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 some of my teammates, uh, it was different. You know, they were, they were colleagues. You know, they were colleagues. Now, but but then it was more like a rivalry between uh, Man United players, uh, Liverpool players, Arsenal players, Spurs players, Chelsea players. You know, it wasn't like such a great atmosphere, such a great bond. But now, now, now they look like they look like uh, like like friends. They are they, they. It's it's more like a club than a national team. You know, they gel together really well, and uh, they enjoy it. And if you watch them playing, they are they are playing with passion and they are playing with uh, with with energy and quality. And I like the way they play. To be fair, uh, one fun fact about you: I don't know if you know. You know now players are followed a thousand statistical information. They have that ratings, that scores. Back there, it wasn't in the '96 possible. But now, if we go back and look all those scores and look all those matches. With that statistical information, did you know that you were the fourth best rated player on the 96 Euro regarding historical data? Now, when we look all the matches again, with all the, you're moving on the pitch and everything, you were the fourth best rated. Did you feel like that there? Really? Yeah. No, so, <laughs> fourth best rated in the whole team. Fourth best rated in the 96 Euro. Well, I wouldn't say that. No, no, definitely not. And I wasn't. You know, <laughs> I wasn't. 
Okay, but that, yeah, that the data, you know, the data are important, of course, and they're important for my job and manager. But then you can't rely only on them, you know, they help, so forth, and they help definitely. But but I wasn't, you know, I wasn't. I was. Uh, I'm not humble, you know. I can say I was. I I had a good Euro. Whole Croatia had a good Euro. We were a bit unlucky against Germany in the quarterfinals at, at Old Trafford. But uh, me to be in top four players <laughs> at Euro. I, just, I will send you a screenshot. I will send you a link. Yeah, I'm going to frame it, definitely. <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, let's focus a little bit, of course, now about uh, with uh, Croatia. Do you, you, you mentioned Croatia. Do you think they have the capacity to, to for a top result? Yeah, I mean definitely, definitely. I mean we we proved that you know we are we are. I mean, make no mistake, you know, uh, we will never be. I'm not talking about what Croatian fans are thinking about us. I'm talking about what what the football world is is thinking about us. We will never be in in like among those favorites, you know, which is also good. You know, you you don't have that chip on the shoulder. You know, you can you cannot relax, but uh, but uh, but 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 uh, you can approach the games a bit more free. You know, uh, we proved. You know, we in in the since Russia. You know, when it clicked, when it clicked, we we had really good tournaments in, even before first ninety six, then ninety eight, then two thousand eight. In Austria and uh, Switzerland, then, then 2012 in Poland and Ukraine. In the hardest group. In 2016, where when we lost against Portugal in a last minute goal, uh, and then it clicked. 2018 and 2022, you know. So uh, and still we have uh, so our. Our players, they know how to play tournaments. They know how to play tur tournaments, in, and that is something that you can't buy, you know. That, that, that is the best, you know. They are like, like Croatia in last couple of World Cups. They they remind me of Real Madrid, you know, even when they're, no, no, even when, not in the terms how we play, yeah. no, not in the terms that we are the favorites, but uh, even when we are losing, you know, uh, you know when when you watch Real Madrid, and I really enjoy to watch Real Madrid. They are never in trouble. I remember a few years ago when they played against Liverpool at Anfield. I think they were losing two nil in 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 twelve minutes or whatever, and it finished five two. I think for Real Madrid because they didn't no panic, no panic at all. They just continue because they know they were there before. It's like deja vu, you know. So Croatia also, Croatia knows, they know how to win games. Because in the games, we've been trailing, we've been losing, and no panic, we're going to come back, we are waiting for our chance, we, come, we, we have that kind of uh, stability no matter what happens during the game. And uh, the majority of the players are still there. Yeah. And knowing Croatia, being Croatian, uh, I told you in the beginning of the interview that there's no bigger thing to represent your country. But when it comes now, the now, but when it comes down to Croatians, we we really want it. You know what I mean? In the beginning, like '96 was our first tournament, and the people were talking, and that there was an element of that. You know, like it's a first tournament. After the independence, the war, you know, we wanted to do something for the people who suffered in the war, for the people who died in the war. Okay, but then two years after, it was the same. And then 20, 20 years after, it's still the same. It's still the same that we have that something. We have that something extra. That the players are, 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 are literally they're giving everything. They are willing to die on a pitch for the country. And that's that's our big advantage, and that's our big, big uh, that's our biggest quality. Yeah, 
We cannot talk about Croatia and not mention, of course, Luka Modric. He was, you were his coach at his first European Championship. I don't know if it is public or not, but I think we can say this will be his last European Championship, probably. He didn't specify, but... but, <laughs> but never, maybe I wouldn't see. bet. <laughs> what do you remember about that boy? I think he was 23 in uh, 2008 and already dominating the field. Yeah, I know Luca really well. You know, he 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 first entered in the in under 21, 2004, when he was the youngest uh, the generation. But and uh, then his first tournament was uh, in Austria. Yeah. Although he was a member of the World Cup squad, yeah, yeah, a couple of minutes, yeah, yeah, exactly. And I, I remember I spoke to him. Well, I talk every day, but I remember the day before our first game against Austria, I had a chat with him on the pitch uh, in Vienna, and I told him like. That of course I expect a lot, or we expect a lot, but to play free just just to be him. And I told at that time it was Xavi and in, Xavi and Iniesta were like the reference points of the of the top top midfielder. And I told them, and I told Luca, I remember that though. And we spoke the and we spoke the other day about it. I told him like I'm not saying that you are better than them, but you are in their class. They are not better than you. And then I think he scored in third or fourth minute. We got a penalty first in match, the first yeah. game against Dorsey and he took it. And he took it and he played amazing, amazing, uh, amazing Euro. I remember uh, I remember him. That game against Turkey, it's it's one of the biggest disappointments for, for Croatia. And so that game wasn't analyzed. You know the whole game or whatever. It was just those couple of moments, you know, and the penalties. But I remember he had a he had a he had a fantastic game in that game, and it's a shame that he was on a losing side. That game, and Luca is Luca is one off. To be fair, yeah. and not one off for Croatia, but he's one off in the world of football. Unbelievable character. Unbelievable energy, unbelievable uh, combination of uh, of uh, strength and humbleness, you know, unbelievable individual, but at the same time, absolutely team player. Everything, everything he's like, uh, he's a dream for every coach. And he is the biggest reason, you know, he's the, of course, Football is not chess or tennis, you know, where you need a team. A player can can do alone anything, but uh, it's going to be very difficult when one day Croatia will be will be forced or faced to play to play without him. Not soon, I hope. He's still very young. <laughs> he's not young, but he's <laughs> spoke spoke with him the other day. He, he still feels great. Now, he wasn't that happy in the beginning of the season, you know, when he didn't have many minutes or whatever. And but now when 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 you really need the quality and characters when I, when when there's no time for mistakes in Champions League, in league or whatever, now he's playing more and more and uh He's playing like he, like like he's twenty five or twenty six or twenty seven. I don't know. Unbelievable, unbelievable. I mean, it doesn't leave you any option than to admire him and love him. Yeah, I can I can see you're talking very differently when you talk about him. It's like a father. It's it, but it's true. I mean, I don't have time, and some some conversations are very private, you know. But he's totally in football. You know, I have a player here, Lucas Zalaray, Lucas Zalarayan, here in Saudi. He's an Armenian guy. All right. So he plays for Armenia. He's Argentinian, but Armenian roots. All right. So Croatia was in the same group with Armenia in the qualifications. And when we lost against Wales and Turkey, I think, yeah, 
then it was out of our hands. And we needed help from Armenia not to lose against Wales at home, mm-hmm. so we can go through without playoffs. So Luka Modric, and that was, I, I don't know, maybe a couple of months ago or whatever. Luka calls me one day, maybe one week before, before that qualification games. And at that time, they have Champions League. They have Real Madrid, you know, playing. Every, you have, you know what I mean? You are not, he calls me and he, and, he, and he tells me, boss, please, can you tell Lucas, uh, can you tell Lucas to give it a go against Wales? So, you know, can you imagine his capacity? Can you imagine his motivation? That even then he finds time in his head and he, he wants, he wants, even then he's thinking about Croatia, he's thinking about, oh, I'm going to call the coach to give a player, you know, to ask the player. So he's, what I'm trying to, what, what I'm saying, he's totally in, he's 24 7. He's 24 yeah. 7. And that is something that you don't really find nowadays, you know. Now I read also uh, after that when Armenia uh, drew with Wales or whatever, there were even some Croatian players who've been asked that and they said, no, I didn't even watch the game. You know, I didn't that. <laughs> you know. <laughs> so now, now, nowadays it's, it's kind of a popular to say, no, I don't watch too much football on the telly, you know. Now I don't do that, I don't do that. No. Then how can you have a passion for that? You know, so Lucas got everything. It's not only his skill. It's not only his, that he's got, I like to say, rear view mirrors, you know, that he knows what's happening behind him, that he's got a outer foot pass like a Federer back end or, or whatever. No, but it's his passion and character. And that was, that was make the difference, the biggest difference. Yeah. Uh, thank you for your time. I think we can expect and, and hope for a great European Championship after, after everything. Yeah, we will. We will. I'm looking forward for it. And uh, as I said, uh, it's going to be massive. It's going to be very well organized, you know, Germany. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and uh, yeah. I think I think it's gonna be great. Yeah. Slavin, thank you for your time. Thank you, guys. Thank you. No problem, Tony.